All right, so today we're going to be working on this 3000 watt inverter. This inverter I bought broken. Uh, it's actually one of my subscribers. Uh, he recently upgraded to uh, a Magnusine. He had two of these and he was attempting to run his house. The problem is, is uh, uh, one leg of his house was always pulling more power or the other leg, it wasn't able to share between the two inverters so he was going through inverters. But this one blew because he, he actually did, he pulled uh, way more than 3000 watts. It was not the inverter's fault whatsoever. It actually blew the fuses once, did not wreck the inverter and then the second time uh, the inverter went. So what we're going to try today, just sit down here, we're going to try upgrading these, actually not the inputs, these inputs I actually looked, these are super heavy duty. These are actually heavier duty than the inputs on the 8000 watt, because the 8000 watt's got so many it doesn't need to be uh, as uh, heavy duty, but these can do 130 amps each, which is nuts, and there's 8 of them. So. The input on this inverter is super heavy duty, and that is why the thermal, uh, this little thermal coupler thing, is right by the output stage. The output stage is weak on this inverter. I haven't looked up this part number yet, but we're going to try upgrading these. I'm most likely going to have to re-drill a hole because I'm going to put uh, IGBTs in here. I don't even know if they'll fit, fit side by side. I got to look. So it might not work, but uh, either way, we're going to fix this thing. What happened was, is these two here, they shorted because of uh, overload. They shorted. These ones are still good. I took out, uh, let's see, I think these are good. I think all the ones on this side are shorted, all the MOSFETs on that side. So... But all the transistors, are, or all these little resistors, I mean, in front seem to be good everywhere. I see no damage other than uh, a little bit of these uh, fuse holders are a tiny bit damaged, a couple of them. Other than that, it just should be a pretty easy repair. Just pretty much swapping the fried ones out and uh, putting the new upgraded ones in. That's about it. Now these IGBTs I salvaged from uh, one of the 8,000 watt inverters I had. I bought one uh, from a guy that uh, it shorted on him or something happened. I don't know exactly what happened, but I'll be using these in there if they fit. I don't know if they'll fit though. That is the question. Oh boy, these are gonna be tight. I am not sure I can make those fit. <laughs> oh well, we're gonna try.
So we got all the replacements in. Everything's checking out good. It looks like this inverter. Oh, you're out of focus here. Come on. There we go. Looks like this inverter is going to work. We got these upgraded uh, RGBTs. They're a little close together. I try to keep a little gap, but the soldering points are ever just a touch too close. So I got them a bit on an angle. It doesn't look great, but I got to re-drill these holes. I'm going to get a drill bit just a tiny bit smaller than those and just let them thread themselves into there because they don't have anything uh, built for this. So, yeah, other than that, I know this was the weakest point before. That's why they have the thermistor here for the fan control. Now this should be at least as strong as the rest. So this could be a 3,500 watt now. It could even be a 4,000, but you got to remember we're limited to the transformers. So still got to be careful. All I want is a reliable 3,000 watt inverter. It'll be good. I'm going to test it with uh, uh, compressors and stuff. Because this, if this works and turns out real good, I might put this in my work trailer and retire my 12 volt uh, uh, Antrax X power inverter that I use in there for backup. And this will be my new backup inverter or my new backup power for in the trailer. I did not upgrade uh, these MOSFETs. These turned out to be a fairly heavy duty MOSFET kind of like them so I decided to keep them it was either those or this is my other option <sighs> right here uh, get that in frame here so those are my two options for the input MOSFETs I went with these because they have um, they can just just uh, what can they do uh, these are 130 amp I believe continuous these are 59 amp continuous that's a huge difference and these can take 500 watts, 520 watts of heat, uh, and these do about 500. So we'll see. I'm not sure if they're better or not, but uh, these, this is what they have on all the 3,000 watts, and I believe it's because these ones are a little bit heavier duty. Anyways, hopefully this thing works. Time to thread those things in. So I'm having a problem drilling these holes and making this work. I've attempted it, but this fin is right in the way. So I got to lift this heat sink up, which doesn't work because all these are bolted in. So I'm going to cut this heat sink, which sucks because I, with these ones, I don't think it's going to be the hottest point, but it still might, which is okay because the thermistor is attached to it and the fans will be controlled by this tiny little heat sink. So I'm going to cut this. And get back to you. Alright, so I got it cut in half. Not the straightest cut in the world because I had to use a sawzall because I couldn't find my grinder because I believe I lent it away. So, fill in the holes and here we go. Let's check it out. The upgraded inverter. As long as nothing else is kind of put in here. So we got the IGBTs. I believe these are, I can't remember, these are at least 10 amps more each, I can't remember exactly what it was, 10 or 20 amp more each, everything is looking good, we're all back together, I'm getting a lot better at soldering with that giant beast there, that thing, I can, it takes me about th 3 seconds to do each of these now, when I start, uh, so the temperature thermistor is on this tiny little heat sink. You can see my cut. Tiny little heat sink. And so that should be controlling all the, the heat on this inverter now. Let's assemble this and hopefully it works. So I got the thing back together. I poked power to it, I turned it on and popped this vet. So what either happened is there's something still wrong in here or that was just a bad FET that I put in. Remember, all these FETs came out of a blown inverter. So, I'm banking on that. So, I just broke off the MOSFET. I'm going to pull these out one by one. And then I'm going to try to wiggle it in with that soldering gun. Because taking this all apart is a pain in the butt. But, after that blew up, I got an output. Like, I unhooked everything and then I turned it back on. And that came on for a second, and then the, it put out uh, 120 volts. So it looks like the output side is good. 
we have a problem with the input side. So once I replace this, because I believe right now is these two are working in conjunction together and we are getting an output, but I want everything to work. So we're going to try and replace this one more time. Hopefully these uh, resistors aren't shot, but uh, yeah, I'm going to check those actually. There we go. Got the 8,000 watt running the entire house. Or at least the upstairs portion that I live in. My sister's downstairs, so I keep hers on grid. Working good. Everything's running through that transformer. We did not make much power today. This one's already reset, set, but about 3.5 kilowatts each, so about 7 kilowatts today. Not much. There was no sun, rained pretty much all day. We're going to be running awfully low on power tonight. 58.4 volts, oh boy. I don't know if we'll make it till tomorrow. Tomorrow's supposed to be uh, sunny with cloud. So we'll see. So far I really like this thing. Even though it is fairly inefficient. Um, I haven't tested the efficiency other than idle. But, uh, yeah. Just giving this a rest right now. Giving that a test. And it's been working pretty good, so pretty happy with it so far. Runs my well pump. Uh, as long as I'm not working, running too much else in the house. If I if I'm pulling more than 2,000 watts and my well pump turns on, uh, going through this, it doesn't uh, want to run it because my well pump's got a ridiculous surge. Like it's got to be around five or six thousand watts that surge. But uh, one thing I do think the 3,000 watt version of this that I have let the voltage sag and then the well pump started easier where this one there is no volt voltage sag it just it either starts or doesn't start so it's pro this one's probably better for the well pump but uh yeah anyways thanks for watching check it out she's working we got we got uh the mosfet replaced i replaced both those tiny little diodes these ones are eight there Seems to be working. Pretty happy. I'm missing a fuse right there. I gotta put in. But other than that, we looks like we got ourselves a working inverter. And maybe upgraded. We'll see. Next up, put the case on and uh, do a load test. Sick. So it's been pretty windy today. On and off. Let's see what we're making. Turn to an amp. Eh, it must be calming down. Before I was seeing a couple amps here and there. Now it's doing almost nothing. What if I got this clamped on maybe the wrong? Oh, there's almost up to an amp. Make sure it closes all the way. Yeah, yeah there we go. Anyways, let's give you a quick update on the. Yeah, it's not that warm anymore. We must be not making much power anymore. Well, it's doing a little bit, but not much. Anyway, see you guys later.